This chapter will focus on adding filtering and grouping to your performance dashboard. Prior to starting this tutorial, it is important to note that the business metrics must be defined appropriately for filtering and grouping. If you're not sure, speak to the person who created the business metric. In addition, you should be familiar with the dashboard designer interface. For this tutorial, we will be using the KPIs and datasets from our Synatica 2010 sample project. Let's start by creating a new dashboard. Drag and drop this KPI onto your dashboard as we know it has interactivity enabled on it. Before we can continue, we have to understand what kind of filtering we want to do on a business metric. In our case, we are showing revenue versus expenses over time. Choosing a range of time would be appropriate to add to this dashboard. To do this, we need to first go to the parameters pane. Next, we need to click here to add a parameter that will facilitate the filtering. A wizard will appear. Let's give this parameter a meaningful name. Click next to continue. Now we need to select the business metrics it will filter on. In our case, it would be this. Click next to continue. Now, select the dimension it will filter on. An explanation of a filter type is in order. There are two types, regular and grain. Regular type means the values of the dimension. The grain type means the level at which the dimension should be grouped by. For example, we may want to group by year or group by month. We'll come back to this later in the tutorial. For now, let's choose these values so we can select a range of time to filter on. Now, we need to select how we would want someone viewing this dashboard to interact with this filter. We want to be able to select a range of time, so we will pick this control. Next, we need to choose some default values. We want to be able to select on a month level, so let's choose the grain as month. Now, we need to select the default start and end value. The business metric usually has defaults set, and they are generally appropriate, so let's leave the default ranges. However, if you did want to make changes, this is how you would do it. Click Finish to close the wizard. Now we want the dashboard viewer to be able to select a range of time. So we need to add this filter to the dashboard by doing the following. Let's set some labels on the filter now. Finally, let's see this filter in action by clicking on the preview button. Now the dashboard has the ability to filter on a business metric. We know that this business metric has monthly data and we want the dashboard viewer to be able to group by year or month. We do this by adding a grouping selection. The process is very similar, so I will skip explaining a few steps. Now, we're interested in choosing the filter type as grain. This will allow the dash reviewer to choose how to group the data. Click Next to continue. Next, we need to select the default grouping level. In our case, let's choose month. Add the grouping selection to the dashboard like so. Finally, let's preview it so we can see how it works. You can see how easy it is to set up filtering and grouping on your dashboard if the business metric has been defined with interactivity. Note that the same workflow will apply to business metrics that have a category as a dimension as well. 
This concludes our tutorial on how to implement filtering and grouping on a performance dashboard.